This video documents the process of crafting Bandini micro tie dye textiles. We will follow Abdul Jabbar Khatri as he creates this beautiful shawl from start to finish. The word bandhani is derived from the Hindi word bandhan, which means tying up. These exquisite works of art are traditional textiles from the Gujarat and Rajasthan areas of northwest India. The world's foremost bandhani masters are the Khatri people who live in the Kutch area of Gujarat. Jabbar is a designer and master dyer whose family has been engaged in the design, tying and dyeing of bandhani textiles for many generations. His work has been recognized by UNESCO with its Seal of Excellence Award for Handicrafts both in 2006 and 2007. Although Bandini is a textile with traditional uses in daily life even today, it is now being adapted for the fashion market worldwide using modern designs, colors and textures for scarves, stoles, shawls, blouses, dresses and other designer garments. It is impossible to say when Bandini textiles were first created in India or indeed anywhere else in the world. The earliest documented example of a tie and dye textile is from the Paracas culture of Peru. It was found in a 1st or 2nd century BC burial site on the Pacific coast. Mordant dyes known around 2000 BC in the Indus Valley ancient city of Mohenjo Daro. It is possible that resist tie and dyeing was also practiced there. Tie and dye textiles were excavated from a 4th century AD tomb along the northern Silk Road in Astana in the northwest province of Xinjiang, China. The textiles may have found their way to India along ancient trade routes. Records and oral history suggest that the Khatri people migrated from the Sindh area of Pakistan to the Kutch region of the present-day Indian province of Gujarat three to four centuries ago. Khatris may be Hindu or Muslim, but the Bandini trade is associated with the Muslim group. They were professional dyers using plain natural dyes on their tie and dye, batik and block printed fabrics. Red and black are still their favorite colors. These textiles were created both for their own use and to meet the demand from other local communities. Khatri customs require that bandhani be worn for special occasions like weddings, betrothals, and last rites, but may also be worn on other less formal social occasions. Today, the Khatri still create the same kinds of textiles using traditional techniques for their own customary needs, but now are actually creating more for the domestic and international markets than for themselves. Bhuj was the capital of the archaic small state of Kutch, established and ruled by the Jada clan in 1548 AD. Though Kutch is peninsula-like, it did not have much contact with other parts of India. When Kutch was annexed to the main part of India after independence in 1948, Bhuj was a flourishing town. It had railways, an airport, bus service, tram, a well-organized postal service, and even minted its own currency. Following independence, Bhuj developed rapidly as a cosmopolitan and secular city. It has many communities of different religions, including Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, Christians, and Jains. In 2001, the city was practically leveled by a drastic earthquake. Today, Bhuj is even more vibrant culturally and economically. The city has mostly been rebuilt and many industries have located in the Kutch region that is peaceful and rich in minerals not previously exploited. Because of the high quality of its traditional artisans, Bhuj is one of India's most celebrated centers of fine textile production. Jabbar Khatri's community has practiced Bandini art and craft since the late 17th century. His mother, Sherbanu, who tied for Bandini traders, taught Jabara this skill. 
Elder brother Abdullah started the family Bandini business in 1994. Jabbar began to help Abdullah part-time while he was a university student studying commerce. Gradually he learned the ropes and when Abdullah branched out to spend most of his time in real estate development, Jabbar had the skills and ability to work independently and the opportunity to expand the business and develop his own artistic talents as a designer and dye master. Jabbar previously used wooden blocks to print design guidelines on the fabric. He now uses butter paper to make a stencil, which is more convenient, economical, and time-saving. He has a collection of 300 to 400 stencils of various patterns and designs. Traditional Khatri Muslim patterns include plants, flowers, trees, but no animal or human forms. For other religious groups, designs may include peacocks, elephants, tigers, birds, dancers, medallions, and other geometric designs. Modern designs include a wide variety of lines, zigzags, circles, squares, random dots, and geometric patterns. The design chosen for our shawl is a jackfruit flower. Very often, Jabbar is invited to the National Institute of Design in Ahmadabad to teach design students the nuances of Bandini. There he has met experienced textile designers who come to Bruges to learn more about the craft and, in turn, have given him new ideas for his own work. These designers often ask Jabbar to create their modern designs in Bandini fabrics. He is also reviving and producing traditional designs that have been considered passé or obsolete. Jabbar perforates the entire design on the butter paper to create the stencil. Pigment is mixed with plain water to make a fugitive dye that is used to transfer the design needle hole dots onto the white or plain colored fabric. The spots are easily washed or bleached out after the tying work is finished. If Jabbar wants the tied dots to be of a color other than white, the fabric is first dyed with that color. The fugitive dye is poured onto a pad composed of layers of jute. When the pad is thoroughly soaked with a dye solution, some kerosene is added to restrict dye spread or bloat, ensuring that the design is printed as very sharp, even dots. If you, if you use the only water, then it will be spread out. So it, <coughs> kerosene will hold the pressing on. So it doesn't allow to spray. Actually, this is the, for the shoe polish. But we use it to rub that brush on the pressing paper. Yeah. And then the small ball get color. We got the white fabric from the market, like uh, Bombay, Bangalore, 
Surat from different place of India and we just cut the fabric as we as per requirement uh, suppose we are doing a dupatta or shawl we cut the fabric two and a half meter and then we give the the raw stitch for just holding the two layers this is how we done very raw stitch just to hold the fabric two pieces together A length of white or plain colored fabric, usually folded once, is spread on the printing table and the stencil is evenly spread over it. In the past, uh, we are using, instead of the dressing paper, we will use the wooden block for the guidelines, for the marking. And each and every block we put separately in, uh, on design. So it takes a long time for making a one piece for the tracing. But now this is the faster and easier technique to do the mark. Mm. Here is the stencil showing the residual dye. The thimble and glass rod facilitate tying. Either silk or cotton thread may be used. The quality and gauge of the thread varies depending on the type of fabric to be tied. Cotton fabric is thicker requiring stronger thread while silk is thin and delicate in texture so that finer thread may be used. The Bondini tying process begins with the artist using the ring finger of the non-dominant hand to push up from underneath the fabric so as to easily pinch, gather, and hold a bit of cloth using the index finger and thumb of the opposite hand. This finger has a long, sharp, natural nail or may be capped with a pointed thimble to help in raising a tiny cone of the fabric. A glass tube is used to feed off the thread smoothly and speedily around and around the gathered fabric. When the fabric is fully covered, a knot is tied at the tip with the help of the middle finger. Jabbar employs about 300 artisans from 20 villages in Kutch to do the Bandini tying. Most but not all of the tires are women. Unfortunately, the tires rarely see the end result of their artistry. The first series of dots will be white or another light color if the underlying fabric has been previously dyed. 
When the first round of tying is finished, the fabric will be dyed and then returned one or more times for further tying sessions if different colors of dots are required by the design. Alternatively, if the textile has been previously dyed with different colors, the series of dots can be tied off at the same time, saving several steps. Favorite colors of dots are yellow, red, pink, orange, and green. This bandini will have orange and the red dots you see she's tying here. Most textiles have only one color dot, but it's quite common to use two dots, and Jabbar has even seen a fabric with 15 different colored dots. fabric is frequently brought to the mouth to wet it to allow better purchase for the thread and a finer dot. Payment for the tying work begins with counting all the tied dots on each textile. This number is divided by four as the payment is made in a unit called kadi. Four tied dots make up one kadi. Payment is based on 1,000 kadi. For example, if there are 8,000 dots in one piece, it has 2,000 kadis, and payment is calculated accordingly for 2,000 kadis. The payment for each kadi varies from piece to piece depending on the quality of the work, ranging from 150 to 400 rupees per 1,000 kadis. Using 275 rupees on average, this works out to approximately 6 US dollars and 40 cents per 4,000 dots, or 10 cents for each 63 dots. The number of dots per bandini textile ranges from 1 to 20,000. A large sari may contain 75,000 dots. Most of the tires are women, 
but some older men supplement their income by also tying, like Ibrahim here, who is 60 years old. Time required for a Bandini artisan to complete the tying of a piece depends on the number of dots and the size of the cloth. A simple design requires less time than a very intricate one. It also depends on the artisan. If the tire is married with children and has lots of family and household chores, she may not be able to give much time to her tying and therefore it may take several weeks or months to finish her work. On the other hand, a young girl, unmarried and with not much responsibility in her family, can devote much more time to her work and may finish more pieces in a given period, even though she may work more slowly than a more experienced tire. Hey! <laughs> Here is our shawl with the ties in place ready for the dye bath. Textiles may be colored using natural dyes and chemical dyes. Natural dyes take longer as the recipes usually require much more time to prepare and use than chemical dyes. Chemical dyes are readily available, cheap, and offer a wider range of bright colors than natural dyes, which are more earth tones and muted. The whole piece is bleached in hydrosulfate to remove the tracing dyes that was placed to make the guideline dots for the tires. The textile is washed thoroughly in water to remove the hydrosulfate. This process has already been performed for our textile. Jabbar mixes an alum solution to soak the textile in for 45 minutes before dyeing. Alum is a mordant, which allows the cloth to take up the dye more evenly. The cloth is washed thoroughly in plain water to remove most of the alum solution, but some remains as a mordant. Our textile will be dyed with alizarin and dawadi flowers, which will produce a deep red color. Alizarin is a natural dye obtained from the root of the matter plant. It is one of the most stable of the natural pigments. Dawadi flowers is a relative of the chrysanthemum plant and also develops a red pigment.
पेमेंट का क्या किया वो पेमेंट का कुछ तो करते नहीं बोलते नहीं। Jabbar can use a single pot of dye to dye many textiles over a several day period. Textile is rinsed once again in water to ready it for the dye bath. Textile is left in the dye bath for about 45 minutes and must be continuously agitated to ensure even uptake of the dye. Just plain water. See, it doesn't bleed. Yeah. But if you use uh, acid dye in Turkey and you wash it, it will be bleed. To achieve darker shades, portions of the piece are dipped in a solution that is produced when scrap iron is left to rust in water for 15 days, mixed with jaggery, a concentrated sugarcane syrup. The deep dark red shade increases the longer the textile is exposed. Then the cloth is washed thoroughly and dried in shade. Uh, more darker than this. First, you have to dye into the marabalum, treat with the marabalum, and then you put in the iron water, it comes almost black.
When the piece has dried completely, it is ready to be opened or untied. If the fabric is pulled in a straight line, it may be damaged and torn. Therefore, it must be pulled diagonally. It is pulled until all the threads untie and pop off. Now the pattern can be seen. Today Bandini is produced for both the Indian domestic and international markets. Opportunities are rapidly expanding as this exquisite art has been discovered by international designers and has now entered the world of high fashion. Textiles appealing to Western taste are made into scarves, stoles, bandanas, and sewn into one-of-a-kind or ready-to-wear garments of many designs, shapes, and sizes such as blouses, dresses, and jackets. Interior designers have also found a place for the color bandini in their work. Jabbar will be taking this pile of bandini to trade shows in Paris and Los Angeles. Yes. So we have some colors like lemon yellow, golden yellow, and brown. First, we are testing the color. some acetic acid vinegar. Now we are washing this in plain water to just remove the excess color. They have to like dry, but not like uh, completely dry, a little bit wet to, to fold the fabric. This I'm measuring according to the length of fabric. So it should be like equal fold at the end.
is 2.25 meter long. So I need this 30 centimeter for one part. This is my uh, first fold, only double fold, four fold. So this is now six uh, layers. So this is like three part of uh, one pattern. And we will folding also the different again. So there we uh, fold it in square. But now we are folding. Uh, Gently to the fabric so it gets color inside. 